Probably the worst thing about using an enterprise server from 2009 is just how loud it is. This is what it sounds like with the chassis cover removed. This is a Dell Power Edge 2950 from 2009. In a previous video, I replaced the RAID card where I also explained why I'm still using and even upgrading this obsolete machine. To put it succinctly, I've already got it and it would be more expensive to buy a newer machine and that's even taking electricity costs into account. I'm only going to be using this 2950 for a year or two and besides, I enjoy tinkering around with old technology. These upgrades I am making to this machine are also not very expensive. Case in point, the H700 I put in this machine to replace the old Perk 6 i cost only $20. This newer RAID card is also compatible with 10th and 11th generation Power Edge servers. Therefore, migrating to a newer 11th gen R710 could be as easy as transplanting the old RAID card and drives from my old 2950. Today's upgrade won't be nearly as accommodating for future machines, but it's still very cheap with all the parts costing less than $5. So what exactly am I doing? I am finally going to do something about the deafening roar of these fans. It turns out that adjusting the speed of these fans in firmware is just not possible, so I'll have to resort to hardware means. Some people buy replacement fans that run slower and quieter, but I'm just going to modify the existing fans since that's a lot cheaper. Specifically, I will be soldering some resistors in series with the old fans. The idle temperature will go up a tiny bit, but others have reported that it's not too bad. The procedure for soldering the resistors was pretty much the same for all four fans. First, I take the connector out of the housing, and then I cut the power cable in half. After removing some of the insulation from both ends, I solder the resistor in place. These are 47 ohm half watt resistors. They are supposed to bring down the idle fan speed from 7000 RPM to 2000. I'm also insulating the solder joint with heat shrink tubing. All in all, it took me about 7 minutes to modify each fan. It doesn't really help that my setup is far from ideal, and my soldering skills aren't very good. I'm just using the soldering iron itself to heat up the shrink wrap tubing, but you should really use a hairdryer or a heat gun. Here I've got my 2950 with the uh, top cover removed. I'm just going to unplug the power cables. Now, I said I was going to modify the existing fans, but I actually have a spare 2950 right here, so I just took the fans out of those, and I'm going to put the uh, non-modified ones back into this spare one. So here are all my modified fans. So now I guess I'm going to start taking out the fans and putting in the uh, other ones. So I'm a bit worried about these uh, cables here because they do get in the way a little bit. And of course, the uh, resistor sticks out a tiny little bit. So uh, this might not be very graceful. Let's see. Oh, it's going in. Nice, okay. Putting the other fans into the chassis was pretty uneventful, apart from the last fan, which was a little tricky to get in. The chassis cover was also being quite stubborn, but I think that was more of a skill issue than a problem with the new fans. After plugging in the power cables, it was time for the moment of truth. Was this mod going to work? Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> it's so quiet. I can barely hear it over the R610. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> so unfortunately, I didn't record what the unmodified fans sounded like with this Blue Yeti microphone. I was going to do a before and after comparison, but then I got a bit too excited. I wanted to put the uh, new modified fans in it as soon as possible and see what it sounded like. And I'm really pleased with the results, but just to give a little bit of a fair comparison between the modified and unmodified fans, I'm just going to put the microphone down, shut up for a bit, so you can just hear the uh, what the modified fans sound like, and then I'm going to turn on the old 2950 with the unmodified fans, and you'll see how much of a difference the resistors really make.
So again, this is with the uh, modified fans in my 2950. So now I'm going to turn on the spare 2950, which has the unmodified fans, and we'll see how loud that is. You may be wondering what effect this mod has on the cooling ability. The stock fans will usually settle down to 7000 RPM after the server has been running for a while. With the resistors, this new idle speed is now about 3000 RPM. As a result, the idle temperature of the server went up by about 3 degrees after this mod from 19 to 22 degrees Celsius. Now there is one caveat with this mod. You do actually have to modify the firmware to reduce the minimum allowed fan speed. If you don't do this, the fans will periodically ramp up and down as the nominal voltage applied to them results in a speed that is too slow. This is apparently really annoying. I wouldn't really know myself though because I've actually already modified the firmware on my machine several years ago. So I've linked some helpful guides in the description below if for some reason you still have a PowerEdge 2950 in 2023. I did briefly try this method on Fedora 38, but I wasn't able to get it working. You may have to use an older version of CentOS or something similar. And that's all for this video. I really wish I had done this mod sooner because the difference really is night and day. I mean, I'm in the server room right now and, well, server room, and you can barely hear it whirring away. Now, I don't expect to do another video on this particular machine just because there's not much else really to do, but there may be more general Power Edge videos coming out, like I don't know, how to access the Drac 5 or Drac 6 in their virtual consoles, and maybe how to install Dell OMSA on uh, Fedora 38 since that isn't officially supported. These are applicable to slightly newer servers, so maybe it'll be an interesting topic.